little bit ago about how everybody talks about you know, last year's defense, uh, being a generational defense and all that. And I asked Ken if you ever got tired of hearing about that. I asked you that same question. Um, honestly not. Um, of course, a lot of things that we did last year um, definitely helped us to put us in a good position of, um, of last year. But honestly, um, coming into this year, none of that is actually going to be able to help us for this year at the end of the day. So I, I feel like just trying to um, build on what we're going to be able to do for this year and just um, be able to um, help others that, um, that didn't contribute as much to that defense as well, um, be able to step up this year and, and, and do their part in filling very well. Keith, what have you seen from Kamari since he's been there this season? Um, Kamari's a really good young player, um, continuing to learn, continuing to build. Um, got a, got a, a good amount of play time last year. Um, I'm really excited to see what he's going to be able to do um, and, and how he's going to be able to help us. Kirby said he had talks with you, I guess, at some point now, just after the play in the national championship and you know, realizing you had a long ways to go and everything. What were those talks like and was that something you felt like you needed after a play like that? I mean, like, always trying to um, stay positive, always trying to find room, room for improvement. I feel like one thing that um, that can put people in bad situations that do things like that is um, be complacent and, and, and feel like that you arrived. Is one thing. Um, is one thing that Coach Smart has said. So just, just really always trying to find something improving, and just know so that you can always get better. Could because there's no limit to um to where any of us can get to. What are, What are some of those things? I guess specifically that you've been working on, you know, throughout the uh, camp. Um, specifically, the um, the cornerback position. I mean, like, there's a ton of things that you can get better on, um, better at. Specific, specifically, um, playing the ball in the air. I mean, like, um, just staying tight in coverage, being able to work your feet at the line of scrimmage, um, being able to get hands on receivers. And just really being able to um, disrupt timing between the quarterback and the receiver. So that, that's one thing. Um, that's a few things that we've been really been working on throughout training camp. What's been your uh, view of the Oregon Ducks offense? What do you know about them at this point? What are you looking forward to seeing in person? Yeah. Oh, um, honestly, I'm really looking forward to play against um, Coach Lanning. Um, they have a great team over there. I mean, like, um, really focus on what and how we're able to just really improve as a defense and, and just being able to counter a good amount of things that they're trying to do as well. And just um, try to come out on top at the end of the day. Yes, sir. Is it him being over there, does that give you pause to, uh, you know, what how good of a coach he was here, knowing that he is pouring himself into that other team? How does that make you feel? Um, honestly, he's a great coach, um, no matter where he's at at the end of the day. And I, I feel like he's going to be very successful. And um, it's going to be a great experience to be able to go against him at the end of the day. So. Another great coach you guys had was Coach Adai, obviously. Is there any differences that you noticed between how Coach Adai prepared you for a game week versus Coach Brown? And if so, what have you seen that you'd like from Coach Brown and how he prepared you guys? Um, coach Brown is a great coach, as well as Coach Adai. Um, I mean, like, they definitely, um, cornerback position-wise, they have a lot of different things that they've been able to teach us. Both of them have helped me be successful at, um, and just continue to work on my craft. And um, I, feel, I feel like both of them coaches definitely helped me a lot. And um, I don't really see too much differences, but I really feel like um, I could be successful no matter who, um, who's going to be able to coach me because I, I feel like they, um, they enhance my game a lot. So. What have you seen out of Dominic Blaylock going against him this fall? Excuse me, I hear you? Yeah, uh, what have you seen out of Dominic Blaylock going against him this fall in practice? Um, Dominic Blaylock's a great player, honestly. Um, shows a great amount of flashes every single day throughout practice. I feel like he's a great player. C continues to help us get better, good on good. and. Um, I feel like he's able to um, take care of me this, like, throughout the season. Your freshman season year, you don't play. I think you only dressed out at the end of the season against Cincinnati. What was the hardest part during that time, just not having football and being out there and being able to go play? Um, honestly, I expect to really, really trying to stay locked in, just continuing to learn the plays. I mean, like, just um, continuing to understand that my, my chances are going to be able to come and just not get too down on myself because obviously injuries are, unco um, are uncontrollable. So I'm just just trying to continue to stay the playbook and just be ready when my chance comes. Okay, what, <clears throat> okay, what have you learned about Oregon's wide receivers from uh, Coach McClendon, uh, his knowledge of, of that room? Um, they're a really good um, group of receivers, as any other, um, as any other receiving core that we're going to be able to see. I feel like um, just continuing to um, scheme on the best things um, that we can do, um, potentially, to be able to um, limit the amount of things that they can do at the end of the day. So, appreciate that. You're a year ahead of David Daniel and Javon Boyer, but what have you seen out of them two in the secondary and uh, the defensive back room that you like at them? Um, both of them are great players, high motor players, um, continuing to learn. I mean, like, just really good sponges, continue to write notes in the meetings, stuff like that, and, and that's something that's going to really be able to help young players be successful. So um, I feel like just continuing to grow. I mean, like, I'm not being too high, too low in, in, in any aspect of practice or in games in general. 
and I feel like they'll be, they'll be successful. When Stetson was up here uh, yesterday, he talked about he was tired of going up against you in practice, you know, ready to, to play somebody. But what have those battles been like through fall camp, specifically with Stetson? And trying to get the best of him? They're great. Um, they're competitive. I know every single day going, going against a guy like Stetson, you're gonna get um, you're gonna get their best, and also he's gonna get my best. So I, I feel like going going good on good um, all the time is definitely gonna be able to help us um, in any type of situation. And I feel I feel like our practices definitely um, give the games, and it's gonna be able to put us in the best position to be able to win games. How do you feel like you've grown most from last season to this season? Um, specifically, I would say um, experience-wise, um, just really knowing what um, offenses are trying to do to me, like like splits and stuff like that. I mean, like just trying to put myself in the best position um, of having a plan um, before the snap. Um, I feel like last year I, I was more of a reactive player um, and just like obviously knowing what I was supposed to be doing, but um, like not being a little bit more ahead of the game. I, I, I feel like throughout the season, the games will be able to um, slow down a little bit more for me. Kayla, you ever driving down the road and see your billboard up there uh, with the uh, is it oil change or something? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And with, did you have any part in uh, designing the ad or anything? Or do you like uh, having that opportunity? Um, yes, sir, of course. Um, NIO is a huge thing that's um, changed. Um, a good amount of college football, but honestly, like trying to keep the main thing the main thing. Um, obviously, of course, it feels good, but I feel like um, the best way to get those opportunities is definitely be able to play good on the field. So, I mean, like, those things will definitely come later, but just continuing to stay hard um, and then doing things the right way on the field is definitely going to um, help me in that. Certainly, back to the previous question about you being a more proactive, proactive player versus a reactive player. Can you think back to a time in practice where you utilize that and it kind of? I guess, can you just think back to the time when you were doing that in practice and it was really effective? Um, I, as I was saying before, um, I would say, like, where, uh, where receivers going to split, I mean, like, down the distance, um, things like that, what, what offense is going to try to do to me compared to third and long and um, first and second down, and um, just being really, being really being able to ID those type of things. And um, I feel like this definitely helped me a lot and just as um, the game slowing down, of course, uh, just trying to figure out a way I can try to be successful and put myself in the best position to be able to make plays. I know uh, name, image, and likeness is behind you, but I, I think of your interception. Obviously, that was an iconic moment, just the way it happened, and Kirby happened to be jumping up in the background. That image that image of you was caught. Uh, I know there are reports that you're the number one earner at Georgia. Is a lot of that from that actual image? I mean, is, do, do, you, do you reap benefits from that moment directly from photos, paintings, you know, people's, people who captured that moment? Um, I've heard a good amount of things like that, honestly. Um, but to be honest, I'm not too sure. But I mean, like, just trying to really just be able to look forward. I mean, like, of course, it was a great moment for me. But I feel like I have a lot more things I need to be able to do in my career to be able to um, help those type of things last. So that's what I'm focused on right now. I appreciate that. What's the biggest difference you feel going into this year compared to this time last year when you, know, you were going to be stepping up playing for the first time? Excuse me, Gary. Yeah, uh, what's the biggest difference you feel going into this year compared to last year when you were getting ready to step up and play for the first time? Um, I mean, like, of course, going into any type of game, I mean, I mean like, football players are going to be nervous, but I feel like um, I've, I've been in a good amount of situations where, where it was make or break it. So um, I feel like just going into the game and, and just feeling like, and you're the game's like the biggest game I could play, you know, um, and just coming in. And, and I know if I do my job, I, I feel like I'll be successful and just being confident in myself and not second guessing anything. I'm um, just re relying back on my training and what Coach Mark's been teaching us. And um, I, I feel like we'll be fine with that. Time, like two such, more questions. You seem like such a quiet guy in here. Have you had to make a, a conscious effort to be louder on the field? Does it come naturally, or do you just try to, to lead in other ways? Um, yes, actually, um, now that you said that, I've. I'm not too much of a vocal person, but I, f I feel like um, when I need to, um, I feel like I'm able to do that in other ways. I don't feel like I struggle with it too much, but um, just really be trying to get the message over um, as, as well as with my actions. He's definitely been able to help me with that. What, what are some ways you try to get that message across to some of these guys that maybe not, might not be just saying it directly? Yes, um, I mean, like going through film with players, um, showing them the right thing on, on what to do and what not to do. And, and how it can help you and, and, and how different things can hurt you. Um, I mean, like, just tr trying to give different players tips, specifically in my position, on, um, like, leverage-wise, being able to keep your leverage, um, and, like, what offensive people try to do to you to keep uh, to put you in the right position. Going into the season, what do you think, um, what, have been the, what have been the coaches' messages to the 
secondary and to you specifically as a leader in this initiative? Um, what's the, one of the messages was just um, I always rely back on your training and um, and what you're trying to do on the field because I, I feel like our practices are going to be able to set, up, set us up in the best position possible. Honestly, um, just rely on each other, honestly, because the DB unit is um, is a huge thing. Um, it's the last line of defense of the defense. So, I mean, like, just trying to be able to rely on them and, and also the alignment. It's like that, just playing together, um, having unity connection. And um, one thing, like, um, school sessions that we've been using as well. I mean, like, um, there's nothing like being, being able to be out there and knowing that your brother's going to be able to do his job and take care of you as well as, well as you got him. So, it's a great feeling. Okay, thank you, Keelan. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Okay.